Hello there! Have you heard about the HasLab Rancor figure? It has been quite the news lately. Here is my opinion of this Black Series figure. Welcome to Unboxing the Boxes, my Star Wars collection. This is episode 68, The Death of the Rancor. <laughs> The story of the HasLab Rancor figure has been a fun one to follow. It was a huge figure designed to go, or designed to be part of, the Black Series figures, you know, the 6-inch figures. I said was because it did not receive the minimal number of backers in order to put this figure into production. It almost made it in the final hours. Almost, but not quite. I guess you could say that maybe it was not meant to be, but why not? Well, in this video, I'm going to look back at the previous two very successful Star Wars HasLab products and see if we have any clues here as to maybe why the Rancor failed. By the way, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with your friends, leave a comment. And maybe, just maybe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. Probably in the notifications bell, too. Okay, just keep in mind, as I go through this video, the opinions stated are my own. No one else's. They are mine. Just stating my mind. Okay? Now, as you can see in the background here, I do like collecting vehicles. That's why the first two HasLab creations kind of caught my attention. What I'd like to do here is kind of go through all three of the Star Wars HasLab creations and see if we can maybe find a few clues as to why the Rancor maybe didn't make the cut. All right, first, let's start with Jabba's sail barge. Okay, if you remember this, this was a couple years ago in 2019. I have my notes here. The Jabba sails barge was huge. I mean literally huge. This thing was 49 inches long, 14 and a half inches wide, and about 17 inches high to the top of the sails. It was a huge vehicle, unlike anything we'd previously seen in a Star Wars toy, if you want to call it a toy that is. It was designed for the vintage figures, so the three and three quarter inch figures. The target that HasLab was looking for was 5,000 backers. It would not go in production if at least 5,000 of these were not sold. Okay, well, they hit 8,810 backers. Not bad. Way beyond what they needed to have. Now, when you figure, if I remember correctly, I think the retail price on these were like $500, $499.99, something like that. So if you take that $500, times it by the 8,800 backers, before they even put this thing into production, HasLab, or Hasbro, already made $4.4 million. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, along with this, Java Sail Barge had a lot of nice features. I'm only going to list a couple here. First of all, it had removable side panels, which if you're into setting up the figures and scenes and so forth, that is extremely critical. You've got to be able to remove those side panels so you can see inside the barge along with your figures and everything. It had soft cloth sails. So instead of being plastic sails that are rigid, we actually had soft, soft ones. It made it more movie-like, more believable more real, if you want to call it that. It also included two figures. It included Jabba the Hutt, and okay, yeah, that's a sizable figure when you figure Jabba the Hutt. And because it made so many backers, they also had a special Yak Face figure. I believe it had the coin with it. I'm not positive on that, but I think it might have the coin. I do have a Yak Face. Uh, now it's not called that anymore on this. It's actually got a name, and 
I don't know if I can pronounce it very well. Sailt Mara, Mara. I don't know. But anyway, I have one of those figures that you could just buy in the stores. Not one that came specifically with the sail barge. Now, of course, with the sail barge, you could really go all out and decking it out. After all, you could put your various skiff guards and drivers and everything else on the thing. You could put Klaatu on there. You could put Lando Calrissian on it. Heck, you could even put your skiff next to it and really make a full scene. Now, this skiff, I happened to find in the store and it was on closeout for 25 bucks. It was normally about $40. So, I wish I would have picked up more than one, but I don't know if there was only one left or I just decided to get one. But this would have been nice to have maybe two so you could set up a little better scenes. But for me, like I say, it doesn't matter. This is still sealed in box. I don't know. Getting closer and older, maybe someday I'm actually going to start taking these things apart. Or maybe selling them. Who knows? But yeah, that sail barge would have been great to have as part of my collection. Unfortunately, the $500 price tag kind of pushed me away a little bit. Was it worth $500? Well, to a die-hard collector, which if I would have had the money, I would have done it. But now you look on eBay and other sites where they're trying to sell the thing in the third-party market, those sail barges are going for over $2,000, and sometimes they even hit $2,500. That's a pretty nice return on a $500 investment, wouldn't you think? That was the sail barge. Very successful. Over 3,000 more backers than they needed to put in production. I think HasLab was very happy with that one, especially since they took in $4.4 million. But was that the best one? No! The second HasLab creation, which came out last year, went way beyond that. And what was the second one? Well, it was the Razor Crest from The Mandalorian. This one really caught my attention because this came out during the second season of The Mandalorian. I was full into it. I really liked the Razor Crest. It was a great looking ship. Almost as good, maybe better, than Boba Fett's Slave One. I'm sure a few of you will leave a comment about that as to which one has the better ship, but I really like the Razor Crest. What are some of the figures on the Razor Crest? Well, it had a target of 6,000 backers. So it had to have 6,000 backers in order to be put in production. Did it reach the 6,000? Oh yeah. And it went way beyond the 6,000. Way beyond the 8,800 that the sail barge got. One reason it probably went way beyond it was because the price was a bit less. Um, it was $349.99. So 350 bucks. How many backers did they get on the, on the Razor Crest? 28,173. I checked their website again just before I started this video. So hopefully that was accurate. So now you figure $350 times 28, over 28,000 backers. That ship, before it even went into production, brought $9,843,000 into the Hasbro coffers. Wow. Wouldn't you like to have a business that could rake in that much money before you put anything into production? What else did it come with, though? And this is what really... Well, maybe before we talk about what else it comes with, let's talk about the size of this thing, because we knew, or we talked about the sail barge being 48 inches long. It was huge. Well, the, tar or the Razor Crest was pretty big, too. It was 30 inches long from tip to tail. It was 20 inches wide, so it was wider than Java sail barge, but shorter, and 10 and a half inches tall. Okay, so it was a smaller ship, thus less price. Um, once again, it was for the vintage figures. Has some of the uh, features that this model had was opening rear and side doors, detachable engines, removable hull panels, so you could really do 
a lot with setting this up. If you wanted to take all the hull panels off, you could almost make the ship look like it did when the Jawas got a hold of it in one of the Mandalorian episodes. Kind of a plus there, don't you think? It also came with the Mandalorian action figure in Bespar armor and with a soft cape instead of the rigid plastic cape. That way you could actually put them into a ship, into the cockpit and so forth. And the cockpit was nicely detailed from the looks of the pictures and so forth. So it had a good starting point already. Then came the tiers. And the tiers are if it hits so many backers, they started adding things to it. Okay, so the first tier was that they would add the escape pod onto the Razor Crest. Kind of a nice add-on to the ship, don't you think? Some people might argue, well, why wasn't the escape pod put on at the beginning of it? Eh, who knows? But it worked. They made it to that tier, of course. The second tier was an action figure. And it happened to be the child in his little floating basket. It was a pretty nice figure, as you can see in the picture here. So, two good tiers there that helped boost things up even more. There was a third tier, and that was the addition of four carbonite figures. You know, figures in the carbonite, like Han Solo was in Jabba's throne room. Well, in the early episodes of The Mandalorian, we got to see that he had been collecting various bounties, and he had them stored in carbonite. Well, these four figures were four figures based on what was in his ship during that first couple of episodes. So another nice tier to add to this figure, or this vehicle, I should say. There was a fourth tier, and that was to add a clear display stand. So instead of just setting it on your table or setting it on your shelf, you could actually have a clear display stand, as you can see in the picture here, that kept it off the table, off the shelf, and made it look a little more as if it was flying through space. So maybe a little bit more of a weak tier, but still a cool tier. Then they added a fifth tier. And the fifth tier was an off-world Jawa Elder. Now they have come out in the vintage collection with an off-world Jawa for the Mandalorian vintage series. But this is the Elder. It's got a few more accessories with it than the regular off-world Jawa did. So another great tier addition. So between those five tiers and easily being reached with 28,000 backers, this was actually, I think, a pretty good buy. And it was such a good buy, this time I broke down and ordered it. So yes, I do have a Razor Crest coming at some point. It was supposed to be here already, but for some reason production got pushed back. Hopefully in early 2022, I will see my Razor Crest. And when I do, I'll probably do an unboxing video for that one, along with everybody else who gets one. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, that one I might not be able to keep in the carton. That one I might have to take out and actually play around with. Okay, so we had some really nice figures added in to the vehicles. Really nice tiers. Probably what you could consider a pretty decent price tag to go along with those two HasLab products. Now we get to the third one, the Rancor. Okay, the Rancor itself wasn't bad. After all, this figure was designed for the Black Series. So it is big. In fact, it has a 42 inch arm span. If you, if you spread those arms out wide, if you put those arms up tall, it reaches up to 27 inches. And it is 17 and a half inches tall, just a figure, if you leave the arms down. And from nose to tail, it is 12.8 inches deep. So it is a very large figure for a creature. I think that was maybe the first problem. They made a creature instead of a vehicle. As we've seen, the first two vehicles did very well. The creature started having some problems. It, it struggled, well, it kind of got up to 5,000 backers. And by the way, for some reason, they decided the Rancor needed 9,000 backers, which I find kind of interesting because the Razor Crest only needed 6,000. And it was the same price. Why did they boost 
the backers, the minimum backers for the Rancor up to 9,000. It almost feels like Hasbro was getting greedy. At least that's kind of what it feels like to me. So they needed 9,000. I know a week or so ago it was right around 5,000. I think it even dropped below 5,000 because when they announced the tiers for the Rancor, people started dropping their orders. What were those tiers? First of all, the first tier, if it reached 11,000 backers, you would get a Gamorrean Guard in a special package on card. So a six inch one, not a five or a three and three quarters. This would be the six inch one. The card was pretty cool and everything. It had the coin and stuff. All right. It didn't push me over the edge to try to get the Rancor. I just thought $350 still was pretty expensive for a beast. Okay, it was a good looking beast, very well painted and everything, but it wasn't a ship. But the Gamorrean Guard, I thought, was nice, but 11,000 backers for it? Eh. The next tier, I think, really threw a lot of collectors in for a loop. You needed to get to 13,500 backers to get to the next tier. And what was the next tier? A pile of bones to put with your Rancor. And a cardboard back for your scene. Really, you could go to the store and probably find a bag of bones for a role-playing game that you could have thrown in there and probably spent five or ten bucks on that. And a cardboard back? Really? Why couldn't that have been part of the box? Why did that have to be something separate to help form a tier? I'm not alone in feeling this. I thought that was a very poor choice of a tier. As far as I'm concerned, the bones in that background should have been included with the Rancor to begin with. They were not a tier for me. The next tier was to 16,000 backers. So we're getting close to nearly double the backers here. And what did they add for that? Solicious Crumb! Yeah, you know, the, the little giggly guy in Jabba's throne room. Really didn't have a whole lot to do with the Rancor. To me, didn't, to me, and to tell the truth, a lot of other people out there, that didn't make a whole lot of sense to throw it with the Rancor. And I have heard it mentioned that that might have been a repaint of a previous figure that came out. So I don't know about that, but that one, once again, did not entice me to go out and push the button to buy a Rancor. The fourth tier was Jedi Luke Skywalker. I think Jedi Luke Skywalker has already been done. The main difference is maybe they did a slightly different sculpt. I don't know. Different card. I know this is the three and three quarter inch Jedi Luke Skywalker. Um, I don't know. It really wasn't enough to get me to go over two. For some reason, when they announced these tiers, the one figure that you thought would have been with the Rancor, the Rancor Keeper, was not anywhere to be found. However, after people started dropping their orders after these tiers came out, Hasbro started listening a little bit. And they did finally decide to put the Rancor Keeper, a new figure for the 6-inch Black Series. They were going to put a Rancor Keeper in with the Rancor itself. It wasn't a tier, it would come with the Rancor. The part there is the Rancor was just going to come bagged. It was not going to have a card that it was going to be on. Now really, HasLab, if they would have sold, let me, let me just throw something at you here. If they would have made their target of 9,000 backers at a price of $350, or $350 a piece, that would have brought HasLab $3,150,000 in pre-sales before it went into production. Are you telling me that you could not even design a cardboard back for the Rancor Keeper? That spoke volumes to me. How much work is there to make in a cardboard back and a bubble to put the figure in? I would think very little when you consider how much work goes into a figure. Like I said, that pretty much sums up the whole Rancor. Great looking figure, I won't deny that. Had 45 points of articulation, so you could do a lot of different poses with it. But I think what happened here is they overpriced it, didn't give you very good tiers, and just kind of made it 
To me, it felt cheap. Yeah, so it was a nice big figure, had a big price tag on it, but really it did not feel like it was worth the $350. Especially to get those other tiers, you had to sell 19,000, or you had to get 19,000 backers to make it all the way to Luke Skywalker. 19,000! That I felt was a little ridiculous. So to me, and granted, this is my opinion, I think they overpriced it. I would be willing to bet if HasLab brought it down to 200 or maybe even $250, they would have sold oodles of these things. They probably would have easily made the 9,000 and at least got to one or two tiers, even though the second tier kind of sucked. So yeah, I think HasLab, the people at HasLab, they blew this themselves. I could be wrong. What's your opinion? Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. That's about all I've got to say about the Rancor here. The Rancor will not be produced, did not meet its backers. We do have our pictures online, though, of it. So we can dream. Who knows? Maybe down the road they'll think it over and try it again with a lower price. Would you be interested then in it? I might, depending on what the price is. Well, that brings us to a close for this video. So until next time, may the force be with you and keep collecting.